I remember the first time I lied about my religion. I was only 10, but I knew it didn't feel right to say I was Druze. In the past, I didn't care much about learning my religion. It was hard to find information because of my life circumstances that forced me to be far removed from the home of Jews. Now in London, I have become more interested in uncovering this part of my life. That's when I decided to reach out to people to help share my story as I will be staying anonymous for reasons you will later know. In general, a lot of Jews individuals don't know much about the religion because it's very secretive and the content of the religion is not truly shared uh, unless you are devoted to the religion as a whole, unless what you call a sheikh or sheikha. And what I know is generally what everyone else knows about the religion. The Jews come from um, Islam, from the Shia sect of Islam in the 11th century in the Fatimid Caliphate. We uh, believe in recarnation, which is the practice of uh, the soul transferring to another body. I don't remember exactly when I realised I was Druze. However, I do remember as a child playing with my grandmother's white veil and pretending it was a bride's veil. She had many of them and they all carried a pleasant smell of incense. One day I asked her why I didn't have a veil for myself. She laughed and said only wise people wear it. I don't exactly understand what she meant at the time. But at the very least, I knew that women who wore the veil were called the wise. For ignorant people, they don't have to practice their religion. But we have to, uh, we ha we have to be close to God. Ignorant people can wear uh, anything, like uh, to be on fashion, uh, wear makeup, uh, short skirts, uh, um, crop top, whatever they want. But wise people, they cannot. They have to wear always black, long skirts, long sleeves, and uh, veil. I was really happy as a child. Some of my happiest memories were in weddings and Eid, where the whole family gathered around enjoying the music, food, and costumes that gave us that uniqueness which is at the heart of being Jews. نحن مثلا بالاعراس عندنا التراديشنال او ثوب العرس خصوصي للعروس بنقول له تنورة العربي بتلبس طربوش وفقيه فوق الطربوش طرحه او فوطه ولازم تبقى لابسه ذهب والطربوش اكيد لازم يكون مليان من الذهب عادات الاكل عندنا بالسويدة بالافراح انه لازم يكون المنسف العربي كمان هي عادي من عادات وتقاليد الدروز عنا بالمحافظة عنا الزواج كمان ما في تعدد زوجات حلو انه خلص زوجي وحدي وببوس التوبي <تصفيق> كمان هالشي كثير حلو انه الإنسان يوم عبي يقدم على خطوة الزواج أبد يكون في مقتنع فيها مية بالمية لأنه عارف لا في رجعة <laughs> like every kid, I waited for Eid to come every year and I still remember the excitement and the happiness I felt in preparation for it. My family would always buy me new outfits to wear during Eid days and my mum would set up a big table full of chocolates, nuts, homemade cookies that she made and baklava ready for all the Eid visitors. We celebrate uh, Adha. But for uh, wise people, they have 10 days fasting before Eid, definitely. And the day of Adha Eve, yeah, they, uh, they, have to, they spend uh, like uh, from the evening to the next uh, day, early in the morning, just, just practicing the religion. But uh, to be honest, some people, they, even they are ignorant, they like to uh, fast. I really love my religion and all the cultural details that come with it. It never created any kind of pressure on me as a kid. In fact, I had more freedom than most to wear what I wanted and make friends with whoever I wanted. However, there was one thing that was always mentioned in front of me, which didn't bother me back then. But now, looking back at it, put me under a lot of pressure. The women under law, under the Druze law, they have equal rights. However, in practice, the status of women in the Druze family is inferior to that of men. There is an intersectionality of problems that amount to one identity and then the other identity and then 
you know, there's you're Lebanese, which uh, you you belong to a corrupted government, and then you're Druze, and which you're a minority in a corrupted government. Then you're a woman Druze. You know, so many levels of different forms of discrimination uh, that fall under that. And I think that alone uh, puts a lot of difficulties in in empowering yourself. But again, a lot of factors play a role, the socioeconomic background, uh, the educational background, and certainly what your parents believe and teach you about the religion at the end of the day. So in the Jewish religion, you, you cannot convert, you're born a Jewish. If you decide to marry outside the religion, you lose that uh, Jewish identity, culturally at least. ما منحبث أو واحد يتأخذ من برا الدينة أو الشاب يأخذ من برا الدينة. And a lot of the new generation, including myself, we do not agree with with this uh, with this sentiment. I'm speaking from myself, but it's something that is it's really frowned upon if not followed. It's not only my parents, but the whole community expects me to find a Jew's husband. I feel trapped between my duty to continue the Jew's heritage or choose in for myself. Although I live abroad, I get approached by Jews men wanting a relationship, but they've always seemed to fall through due to the differences in views. If we get married to any other uh, religion, Druze will, uh, will not, you know, uh, exist anymore. I think that the Druze sense of solidarity, protecting themselves, uh, in a world where they're a minority, and they're threatened by everything around them. They preserve their beliefs, their values in that circle. So let's say if you marry outside that circle, you're threatening this as well. I heard many offensive assumptions about my religion, especially during the peak time of the civil war where I hid my religion to avoid potential harm. One time in school, I heard a classmate say that Jews people are atheists and they can never trust them because if they're not afraid of God, then they're not afraid of anything. I just froze. I couldn't retaliate and tell them I was Druze and how they were completely wrong about us. So I ignored it and walked away. When someone asked me about my religion, uh, I say Druze, they think that I'm a Jewish because they never heard of that uh, religion before. الشيء اللي بيزعجني انه ينحكى عن الدين الدرزي او ها انه نحن ما بناكل جرجير او كزبره او ملوخيه انه قال ان العجل زحط عليهم وانه نحن بنامن بالعجل بس هل المعتقد كثير غلط نحن بنامن بالله وكله كلام اكيد هاي مش مضبوط ايام قبل كانوا ما ياكلوهم او ما يحبذوا الاكل هذولي لانه بيقولوا مثل بيغيب الانسان عن الوعي او بنعسوا انه مثل او بصير ينعس الانسان انه مثل في الكزبره والملوخيه بالاخص انه فيها ماده منومه فبيحبذوا انه ما حدا ياكلها بس لا اكثر ولا اقل مش مثل الكلام اللي بنقل انه نحن ما بناكلهم لاسباب ثانيه Someone asked me, is that correct when uh, a woman or a man, Druze, join any other uh, person, like in the same room? Is that right? They can like have sexual relationship, uh, is, it will be like halal. Someone also asked me, uh, is that right uh, when uh, wise people go uh, to practice their religion in an austere uh, house, is that right that they just start having sexual relationship between each others? <laughs> it's really funny how much they devote themselves to God and then a rumor spread that they're, uh, <laughs> they're having sexual relationship while they're practicing their religion. وفي شغله ثانيه كثير بتضحكني انه نحن او ماخذين نظره عنا انه نحن الدروز بعد الساعة 12 انه بيحمر عيوننا بيطلع لنا ذيل او انه بيطلع لنا قرون انه نحن مثل اكلين لحوم او شيء بس اكيد هذا معتقد كثير غلط بس لانه نحن ديننا ما بنحكي عنه كثير ما بنفسر عنه كثير انه دين مستتر ماخذين عنا هاي النظرة بس اكيد غلط 100% so it's it's really hard to be a wise druze. It's hard when you hear, to hear someone talking about them, especially in a bad way, because God, this is usually forbidden. Uh, because uh, our religion is not uh, well known among other uh, religion, so uh, very few people knows about uh, druze. I was a proud kid, 
the Jews' identity made me stand out. But while growing up, I realised that being different came with consequences. Seeing all the hate towards us made me become less confident and silent about my faiths. A lot of my friends and family members do not hide their identity, but they are not outspoken about it as well. بس هون مثلا بلندن تعرضت لاي اكثر من انسان يسالني شو ديانتك ابحكي انا ديني درزي انا كل حياتي برا اكيد لو كنت بسوريا ومجتمع كله اسلام او مجتمع كله مسيحيه اكيد رح داري حالي وقول لا انا يا مسلمي يا مسيحي I have heard a lot of testimonies of people who are treated differently in work because of their Jewish identity عندنا هالخوف لانه نحن الاقليه الأقلية بسوريا وثاني شيء في كثير ناس بتنظر إلنا إنه نحنا للأسف دين كفار أو أو بلا 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 فما بدك تقعد تشرح لك الإنسان بإنسانه تشوفي. I was ten years old when I went to my first ballet class and I remember being asked by the other dancers about my religion because my mum wasn't wearing a hijab. I felt nervous and quickly said I'm Christian. Not only because I was the only Jews, but also to avoid the curious questions about my religion, which I didn't know the answers to at that age. I think that was the earliest memory of me hiding my religion, but definitely wasn't the last. Even till now, some of my close Arab friends don't know what religion I am, because I'm scared they'll change the way they think of me. If anyone has to hide their identity because they're afraid of being subjugated to violence or discrimination, there's something wrong. And this, is, this frustrates me. During the civil war, we were targeted by extremists. They considered us apostates, which meant that it was halal for them to kill us and many other minorities. In the summer of 2013, I woke up one day and walked to the kitchen to greet my mum. Then everything paused for a moment. I saw a strong light coming through the window and a loud explosion noise followed by a sound of glass shattering and horrified people screaming. My family and I were lucky enough to stay alive, but that was when we decided it was getting too dangerous, so we left. Extremist attacks like this still go on to this day. However, this birthed the brave and reckless fighters that have been protecting this religion for over a thousand years. There was a massacre that occurred in the Druze mountains of Syria and uh, it was the time of uh, the Syrian civil war till now. And I was in Lebanon at the time and the huge amount of people uh, uniting in the streets and simply voicing out that an atrocity has occurred and we stand together no matter our nationalities. And I think that was a sense where I felt a sense of pride and also a sense of responsibility. Wherever we are, we attempt to blend in and contribute to the peace of the country with the long history in helping our respective governments. نحن الحلو فينا بالدين الدرزي وين ما كان نحن بنتأقلم بالمنطقة اللي نحن عايشين فيها وما منكفر حدا. نحن لا لك المعتقد واحد والدين أكيد الدرزي واحد كلنا من آمن بالله إيماننا بالله أكيد هاي بلبنان بالأردن بفلسطين بسوريا. بس في شوية اختلافات أكيد سياسيا أكيد بيختلف كل بلد حسب السياسة اللي بيتبعها. And putting aside our differences makes me hope more for the future. I I hope that Druze will uh, better known and recognized among other uh, religion, uh, and uh, you know to stop those rumors about them. So that everyone should know what really Druze are. I hope that the religion becomes. Um, more understanding of women, their rights and their empowerment. I hope we just uh, keep progressing in a way that it safeguards the values and the beliefs of the community, but also in a way that we are not uh, devaluing universal human rights. I hope my generation and the generation to come works on creating an environment where we're all free to be who we are and to represent what we are without being in fear. I am a Druze and I'm so proud. I think it's too late to open up to my close friends about this part of me, but maybe through this documentary, I'll be braver to tell my new friends in the future.